representing international law and the settlement of disputes students, please welcome Bernard and Ta Tahiraha from Burundi and Fausto Aria de Santis from Italy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I remember 10 months ago when the academic year started hearing from Professor Abdallah, the vice rector, saying that many former students of UPS said UPS had changed their lives. Uh, as most of our classmates, I was skeptical. <laughs> Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for skeptical people, people who even sometimes can resist change, talk to lawyers. <laughs> and don't blame them because this is how the law as discipline is, because it's uh, mostly about the social order as it exists just now, and not necessarily as we want it to be. <clears throat> Ten months at UPS had changed all that. The, they have given us a feeling, a new feeling, a feeling that no school, no law school in the world can give. We are now constantly aware that law does have a purpose, a purpose much bigger than law itself, and this purpose is peace. And this might... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this might sound basic kindergarten wisdom, but it's, it's actually much complicated than, than, than it sounds. Most of you know how, how often this sense is, uh, is lost in the interpretation and the application of, of law, and how ugly are the resulting solutions. This has led our class, the ILSD 2012, to a proposition of uh, a new principle of treaty interpretation, a principle that so far doesn't exist in uh, international law. <laughs> We've called it the propaxe principle, paxe, the, the Latin word meaning peace. And as we framed it, this principle suggests that each and every rule should be interpreted in a way that promotes international peace. But we are not naive. We, we know that it's going to be tough to make it adopted. That's, that's why we requested the, the leadership of uh, our professors in the department not only to, to chair the, the teams that will draft the, the final proposal, but also to mobilize the, the world legal academic community to make the Propaxe principle as soon as possible a Juan Carlos style uh, lofty and sexy rule of risk <laughs> I want to finish mentioning that our journey has been made beautiful by uh, an amazing uh, learning and the social environment. Thank you, Costa Rican people. Thank you, Costa Rican families. And a special mention to the gathering in Costa Rica. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the class environment was, was amazing because not only professors were lecturing, but also students with their huge and diverse experiences were contributing to the <coughs> magic of knowledge creation. That's why I, I'm, I'm leaving you in the hands of uh, the torch, the light provider of our class, the philosopher, <laughs> Aria, Fausto Aria de Santis. Welcome, Fausto. <laughs> Dear Bernard, oh, that is too much of a compliment, and I'm sure everybody knows here that you've exaggerated a bit, or quite a bit. <laughs> but thank you, and thank you for being the wise pillar of our class, and we could rely on you all the time. I just wanted to share with you all an interesting idea. In all languages, work is related with action. Well, not everywhere. In India, we call it kama. Yes, the famous word from the famous Kama Sutra. Kama, in Sanskrit, means passion. And in Hindi, it also means work. So that which creates action also creates passion. And when we connect the two, 
we nourish the love making of our ethical and professional vocation. It is not really work, the one that does not create pleasure and passion. And let me conclude with a wish for us all. May our lives be the fruit of our choice, a fruit of justice and a choice of passion, of karma. Thank you all.